Moral Shell. Have you ever played Dark Souls and thought to yourself, where the fuck is Hellboy and his Siamese twin? Of course you have, it's easily the biggest missed opportunity in the Soul series. So when Moral Shell showed up and showed me this motherfucker, I was buzzing out my tits. You so fucking precious when you smile. Until a fall. And now I have came to the conclusion, he can go fuck himself. Moral Shell is a Souls like, where you play as Voldemort stealing dead cunt armour. Werna is a shell with the story revolving around a starving pigeon telling you to do shit for him. And getting molested by spiders in the process. Looking back, uh, I probably should have actually paid attention. This game is heavily inspired by Dark Souls, with its weird creepy bitches, hard bosses and punishing yet rewarding gameplay. The game doesn't stray too far from the combat that the Souls games are known for. Slash that motherfucker and roll till you've got the lumbago. Lumbago? The only major change is that instead of blocking you can harden yourself. That's what she said! <laughs> But you pretty much become a rock, blocking all incoming damage for one attack, which is a cooldown after it, so you're no invincible obviously. But my favourite thing about the hardened mechanic is how invincibility frames don't look like you're breaking the matrix as you go into your hardened shell when dodging, so you actually deflect the hit rather than it passing through you like Friday Night's Kebab. And finally, I, I, I just love the hardened mechanic because as a hard man myself, I can relate. The shell mechanic allows for more aggressive playstyles, so you can stay in the action without taking damage, being able to harden mid combo. So the game has four weapons and four shells you can find throughout the game. The four weapons all play completely different and have cool abilities unique to the weapon, like putting ice on your sword, which I'm going to be honest, it had me confused. How is ice going to do more damage than steel? I, 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 don't, I don't see why you would do this. What the fuck is the point? The weapons can also be upgraded to give them more damage. A lot of damage. I mainly use the massive sword because I ain't no bitch, but it really is your personal preference at the end of the day. Now, the shells is where the fun begins. The shells pretty much act as your typical build, where you've got the basic bitch who's average at everything, your fat boy who's got no stamina but can take a fucking hit, like your average Glasgow junkie blasted on Coca Cola. This guy, which can use more abilities or some shit. Ah. I don't fucking know. And finally, my personal favourite, the speedy boy that gets knocked down more than Amir can. Oh. And I and, uh, just can that, that that's impossible. But really, how could you go anyone else when you see that damn stamina bar? Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he's thick! With these classes comes very distinct playstyles, and on top of that, rather than having your typical leveling system, each class has their own abilities unique to the class. Fucking hell, I'm, I'm saying class a lot. You can buy with Tar, which is the currency in this game. So the progression ends up being around you acquiring upgrades for your weapons and gaining new abilities. I should also mention you've got parrying in the game, which can allow you to heal on successful parries. But I tried this once and promptly realised it wasn't for me and pussied out using parries for the rest of the game. What is this? Right, I want to talk about the level design here because it's taken heavy influence from Dark Souls 1, having your main, yeah, well, the whole game has, but f fuck off. Having your main hub area and smart interconnected areas through holes. NANI? Congratulations. Which conveniently you can crawl through. The world has been designed so there is no need for fast travel, which I can't tell you how much I love this. Every inch of the map is dense and populated, with so much cool shit with the exploration feeling so much more natural and rewarding when the map just hasn't been made big for the sake of being big, which most modern open world games do. And to overcome that amount of bore nothingness, they're like, right boys, what, what the fuck do we do? Fast travel, yeah, ju just slap that on it. And, and that gets rid of the main appeal of open worlds. I just absolutely love the small compact areas and the atmosphere they all provide, apart, apart from this obsidian area, that, that it can go fuck itself. So what about bosses, considering they are typically the key element of these games? And this game ain't no slouch, all bosses are pretty fun and present unique fights, although they don't reach the same difficulty levels of bosses you would see in other souls, like they definitely don't feel easy and will always feel rewarding as fuck to beat. Especially when you're shit like me, okay? Misa more of a deep thinker. Another aspect I really like is just the general enemy design, although some enemy placement can be a bit suspect at times, and you will see reskins of enemies throughout the game, but overall the enemies in the game feel really fair, and I found that always got destroyed 
by new enemies and then would learn new ways to fight them and utilize my weapon and shield to kill the bastards. I think just the enemy design and fucking boss design is fan fucking tastic. I, I guess it's kinda hard to fuck up this in our souls like, but the pacing through it is brilliant, with it never really getting stale or repetitive or over its rather short runtime of about 10 hours. Progression always kept me engaged and the combat was so rewarding to get better at. Plus the fact slashes and killing enemies on its own feels really fucking great. This game also just you get you get quite a lot of fucking freedom. You can go where you want, when you want. Fucking hell. Imagine that. A game letting you do what you want. I was only asking you what you wanted today, alright? So decide! You decide. <laughs> no! Decide! <laughs> no! Oh, music. Fuck. I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot there was music. So that's probably not a good thing. Overall, this game was really fucking impressive for me. Apparently, this was made by 15 people, which, Jesus Christ, what a fucking game. This game knows what it wants to be and it does that so fucking well. This is easily one of the best Souls likes I've ever played. The small vision of the 10 hour game and just making it a very good small experience really worked out because I really fucking enjoyed it and I feel like if they aimed for a longer game or just something that wasn't possible for them, the game might have lost some of its charm. I also want to say this game is 24 quid for fuck's sake. An uh, indie developer, it's their first fucking game, they were founded in 2017 and their game's a fucking banger and it's 24 quid. Uh, you know, I had a fucking blast with this game. Uh, I really can't wait to see what other games these motherfuckers produce, but definitely exciting. So where does Mortal Shell sit on the old reliable, trusty shitometer? Well mate, it is class. Cold symmetry, well fucking done. I like yous. Keep, keep up the good work, lads. Oh. No. No.